YouTube! Back at it again with the IRL TCG vlog series. Each week, we will be playing Master Duel in real life, ideally trying to play a new deck and mix things up, depending on what my friends are willing to let me borrow and misplay into the ground. Back in the olden days, we had to actually meet up in person and socialize with other human beings in order to play Yu-Gi-Oh! Anti-spell is in the standby phase, not the main phase. In this series, I'm going to be giving you my full breakdown, recap of the gameplay, and pack opening of my loot. Let's jump in to this week's segment. Another week, another locals. Let's take a look at my deck profile and what I've cooked up for this event. So I've decided to go with a bit of a unorthodox punk build, shall we say. It's really just pure punk with a bunch of bestials, some cash tier cards, and some staples. So uh, it's it really is just about controlling the field with your heavenly dragon and using all of your staples to defend. We got three Zayaman. We got three mixed rarity foxy tunes. We got three ogre dancers, the searcher of the deck. Two deer note because, well, one isn't enough and you might run out. One Sharakusai. I was thinking about playing multiples of this, but I think one should be enough for most of the things you're doing. And then the rest of the punk one-offs is the wagon, the field spell searcher, the madam spider, the field spell itself, the ghost ogre, which is, I suppose, an honorary punk monster because it's searchable. Uh, and the one-off, uh, Gabu. I think, is it Gabu or uh, Nisha Nishawari? So this is the destroy one, not the negate one. Uh, three copies of emergency teleport. This card is in the game still. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we're taking m massive advantage of staples uh, with Fenrir, uh, just because it's obviously a generically good card. It's the New Age Pankratos. But of course, very importantly in this deck, it's a level 7, which synergizes really well with level 3 tuners, making Bar on the floor. Here's our Bestial Engine. We're playing Triple Labellion, uh, Double Magnemot. <laughs> Pulled? Before you click off, yes, that is three copies of Magnemot. Uh, double Magnemot. Yes, I know, that wasn't just one, but two ban lists ago. Why the hell are you uploading this now? This vlog was obviously recorded ages ago, and it took a while to get this up because things just happened. You know, uh, we had the subathon, which took like a month out of my life. It's crazy when you have to like actually speak instead of just typing tech W misplay. <laughs> uh, my son was born, and then just other projects took more precedence over this. So unfortunately, uh, I just had to like focus on some other things, but I did get around to it. I do want to make the weekly vlog thing every Wednesday, TCG content, uh, and I hope you keep watching and enjoy, because despite the three Magnum, uh, double Magnum, there's still, like, a decent amount of stuff going on here that's relevant for these decks, and it was just a fun, like, time, and there's some good duels, and a lot of effort went into this, so I hope you still enjoy. Please stay tuned, and enjoy the rest of the video. And then one of Baldrake and Drew's Worm. The more bestials, the better, but it just depends on what your matchups are. Uh, hopefully, we play against a lot of dark and light decks today. And to go with that, we play the Beast and the Branded, which obviously synergize really well with such a big bestial engine. For staples, we're playing three copies of Infinite Impermanence, three copies of Ash Blossom, and two copies of Effect Vela to round it out to a nice 40. The extra deck is uh, very loose in the sense that you can really play a bunch of stuff that, you know, there's, there's like three or four flex spots, honestly, but uh, for mandatory, of course, you play the one of Rising Carp. Uh, I play two Dragon Drive and two uh, Heavenly Dragon. I don't even think the seconds of each each of these came up, but there's just so much space in the extra deck. I figured I might as well just in case they ever come up. Uh, so two of each here, as well as the Bar on the floor for your ten. Like again, Punisher, of course, is a staple in this deck. Uh, we went with an uh, a Zeus here, as well as a Fortune Tune, because I guess I'm still a closeted BA player, so you know I gotta go for those easy. Uh, Zeus plays when possible with two level three bodies. Uh, one Orcus Dingirsu to uh, non-targeting send problem issues like Boral End specifically. Uh, we've got Mascarena. If you have spare bodies, you can just go into Mascarena with a White Woman Jump Scare as well as the uh, Unicorn uh, to round that off. But of course, we're also playing the Extender Dark and Access Code Co Talker. Cocker! Ha! <laughs> Funny. Uh, to uh, end games very easily and simply, although you don't even really need Access Code. Like I said, there's so much space in this extra. You can really find a bunch of stuff. One card I guess was kind of missing, Vermilion Dragon Mech. It's a good level 9 that pops cards. You can also play Shen Shen, which is a decent little guy to end on if you have the body spare. For my side deck, I came very prepared for back row decks this time, and as you can see, my main deck is very bad against back row, so in the side deck, we've got a lot to contend with that. Triple evenly matched, double lightning storm, the third duster, uh, and then for more anti-combo stuff, we've got three Nibiru. Oh, you've even got more uh, anti-back uh, row stuff with three Twisters. It's a heavy, heavy anti-Twister, anti-combo deck, uh, and uh, anti-back row in this. Really just going for those heavy blowouts with Droll and Nibiru, and then all of the back row removal in this deck. Really a uh, throwback to be playing Twister again. All right, that's been my deck profile. Let's jump into game number one and see how that goes. Punk Buster Dragon is here, baby, and it's time for game number one. 
where we have a very big matchup for us. Let's jump in, check out the opening hand, which is Bestial, a hand trap. Nice. But also, most importantly, Ziamen. Surely a singular response to this play won't simply just end our turn, right? Well, fortunately for us, our opponent is not very good at the game and is significantly less skilled than us, as we do not see any disruption for our singular card combo. I'll show you it and quickly run down the combo, because I'm sure most of you know by now what it does, but to do a little refresher for any newer players unfamiliar with the glory of the punk deck, Zayaman gets you Foxy Chun, who discards to special Sharakusai from the deck, which lets you fuse into Rising Carp, which has the effect to special two punks from the deck. We get Wagon and a Deer Note, and Wagon gets you the field spell, and Deer Note is a level 5 that sinks into 8 that floats back to the Sharakusai from the grave, who is a quick synchro on the opponent's turn. We use our search effect of the Dragon Drive, who gets you a Psychic from the deck, and normally you go for Madam Spider, as this will allow you to search for a Trap card. And on top of that, twice per turn, your field spell can net you a draw whenever you pay life points and punks pay a lot of life points. Field spell is quite nifty because as you can see here, it allows me to special any punk from the hand by banishing one from the grave. Madam Spider searches Nashiwari Surprise, a trap card which pops any set on the field, but if you control a punk, it also hits face up cards. We get another draw from the field spell and normally this is the end of the combo. A single Ziaman and any random discard ends on a pop, a quick synchro into Heavenly Dragon which bounces four cards to the hand, two draws, and the setup for next turn. That's the basics, but I have a Magnemut here, so I use it as an extender that lets me link away with the Madam Spider for an IP Mascarena. I set the Branded Beast and the Nashawari Surprise for the end of my turn, giving me four bounces, two pops, a DD Crow, a spin, a setup for my uh, following turn, as well as a Searched Dragon. And I also managed to draw Valor, so this is looking pretty unbeatable. He summons Ariana, which we hit with an effect Valor. He activates Ku Clock, which lets him use Welcome after setting it, and I respond with a Ball Drake on the Ku Clock to prevent it from coming back as a free body, which resolves into a Stovey Torby being summoned. He tries to go for the Battle Phase to force out Mascarena, which is an easy protection by Nashawari. Main Phase 2 heals Stovey, set a big Welcome, a Mystery Back Row, which prompts me to Quick Synchro for the Heavenly Dragon, returning both sets to the hand, leaving a completely open field for me to attack for game. If you ever wanted a demonstration of what this punk deck can do, well, as accomplished, I think I've showcased that pretty well here. Let's move on to game number two. Here, our hand is not looking too bad, honestly. We've got double lightning storm and evenly match, but engine is looking a really uh, not so good. Um, we need a Ziaman, E, Tele, Ogre Dancer, or Foxy Tune off the top to make this a game-winning hand, which is a lot of potential good draws. He leads with Ariana to Searching Lovely, and usually they do this play to play around Ash Blossom, so that makes sense here. He goes for Ku Clock and then uses Stovey to get Big Welcome, triggering the Ku Clock to bring itself back to the field, going into Muckraker and bringing back the Lady from the Graveyard. Now, by using Big Welcome, he can get Lovely's effect as well, recycling the Big Welcome and without inting into Ash Blossom. He ends on a lovely, big welcome Stovey and a mystery spooky skeleton set card. And of course he snipes the lightning storm from my hand, but that's not too bad because I opened two of them. In fact, this is actually a best case scenario. Very well played. We draw for turn and oh boy, there it is, Zayaman. This is looking kind of cracked actually. Went to the battle phase and immediately at the star step he goes big welcome, triggering the big lady to set Eradicator and then gets Ariana for lady. New chain, a bunch of furniture shenanigans occur and snipes a deer note from my hand and gets to add the Ku Clock so that he can actually EEV me. And on resolution, I get EEV'd. Uh, to not risk getting hit by Evenly, which uh, he calls Trap Cards. And, you know, I could be bluffing, I guess, but it, it works out. We've managed to bait absolutely every card and still end on Lightning Storm Ziaman in the field spell. No it's punking time. I normal summon Ziaman and use the effect, not using the field spell here. I think it's fine to go at Greedy since we know the last card in hand is Lady and not a hand trap. Field spell effect summon Sharakusai and now it's time to do the full combo. Or so I think. He uses the Lady in hand special summoning her and then now because he controls a big field, he can use Big Welcome's Grave effect to bounce Sharakusai back to the hand. Judge! Yeah, we didn't catch it at the time. Uh, you can't use both big welcome effects on a single turn. So essentially I had the full punk combo through that disruption as well. Uh, but it is what it is, uh, both players don't read. Well, let's go to game number three. We get to go first this time, so let's try to win this one out. We've got Wagon Spider, a Foxy Tune with a Veiler and a Twin Twister. It's looking pretty spicy here, so we Foxy Tune into Ziaman, and that's really all you need. Start with the normal summon Wagon for the field spell and get hit by Drollin Lockbird. That's, um, reverse Max C for punks. 
Honestly, you do so much searching and drawing with this deck, it's it's absurd that Droll is just actually just game ending for this deck. Well, we can still Foxy Chun discard here, summon out Sharakusai, who gets out Carp for Deer Note, and I guess we summon Ziyaman even though we can't add, and not sure what you're supposed to add here or if it even matters. Dragon Drive is summoned, can't add, can't draw, float effect of Deer Note to Sharakusai, and then we get hit with Nibiru on top of that last final play. Droll, Nib, Chandraglir. Really? <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! He does a pretty cool play here, which is Furniture Discard Nibiru meaning that you tribute the whole field, but you don't get the body and you don't give your opponent a token. Well, so I try and debate if it's worth using Twin Twister on this set big welcome, and I guess he forces it for me since uh, he uses Ku Clock, and I stop him from using it this turn, just in case he has a lady in the hand. Pass turn, and the Stovey discards Nib for a regular welcome, adding back Ku Clock, and Ku Clock's hand effect puts him on no cards except the set regular welcome, which he then uses the regular welcome without actually controlling a Labyrinth monster. And that's not legal. Okay, it is what it is. Labyrinth is a deck with a ton of restrictions and conditions, and um, we foregore. Anyway, Ariana gets hit with my effect, Valor, and that's met with a dodge, because he has the big welcome in the grave from last turn. He gets another big welcome and triggers both Chandra and Stovey, passing to my top deck, Ash Blossom. Stops the big welcome, but with Stovey on the field discarding Chandra and a follow-up Ariana, this game is looking a little doomed. It was a valiant effort. We tried our best, but Droll, Nib, and two illegal plays is a bit much for the old punk deck to handle. Let's move on to the next round. Round two, and we win the dice roll. We got a very nice hand here. A full combo of Ash Blossom and a Bestial as well. We go Emergency Teleport for Ziyaman, and well, last round I already explained the combo for you, so we don't need any introduction here versus no interruption. This allows us to end on a Mascarena for a Unicorn. This was pre-SP Little Knight, I know. A Searched Ghost Ogre, a Searched Pop of any card, Two draws, a search to Druid's Worm, and a quick synchro into Bounce 4. He leads with Pot of Extravagance, which we can easily diagnose for Ash Blossom and Seasonal Depression. Activating the Labyrinth Field spell, setting 4 and passing turn. End phase, we activate Sharakusai, or better yet, Tupac, as Josh likes to call him. I, I don't get it either, but he thinks a plant vanilla is too good for the game. This returns all four cards back to the hand, clearing the way for a very simple OTK next turn. Alright, let's see how we can do going second then. Naturally, the Labyrinth player chooses to go first, and once again using Pot of Extravagance in two. <laughs> Bloss. Set three cards and pass turn to us. We drew evenly Twister, and this baby will put any trap deck into panic mode. Straight to the battle phase we go. He gets out a lady, which doesn't do much. Just wants the welcome in the grave, I suppose. One remaining set card, and I chose not to Twister here because my hand's starting to get a little empty. Although in hindsight, that might have been a little bit greedy. We activate the flubba dubba lub line to search a Druid's Worm, and then we Twin Twister. Time for Ogre Dancer to get Sharakusai. We fuse with the hands Foxy Chun since we can't discard anymore, and yeah, full combo in main phase 2 with the field spell draws gets us Ash Blossom Valor, by the way. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous. We pass with the Dragon Drive, two pack play, as well as two hand traps versus two cards. Pretty convincing here, not gonna lie. As soon as we declare the Sharakusa in the end phase, he scoops it up. If you ever wanted a display of how ridiculous non-engine cards have gotten in Yu-Gi-Oh, even things that are now seven years old, like evenly matched, well, there you go. Let's move on to round number three and try and end out the day with a positive record. So our opponent wins the dice roll here and they're actually playing Branded. Yeah, no, that's, that's a deck of all time here. My man's is running Preda Plants and opened Instant Fusion. If that isn't an FTK, then I don't want it is. Let's see how this plays out here. Ambulance searches the fusion scale, tributing itself for a Cobra who gets branded fusion from the deck to the hand. He banishes the ambulance and Albaz with Albion to summon Mirror Jade, bringing out the flubba dubba lub line from the grave with its own effect, activating branded lost, deploying the troops, 07, and summons Dark Fucking Magician from the deck here. <laughs> well, you know where this is going. He fuses the Dark Magician at Lobelian with his Predator Plant scale, and then the ultimate, the one, the only, the Red Eyes Dark Dragoon in the year 2024. Well, I, I think this 23. Technically, this was during the subathon. This was a few months ago. So for our turn, let's begin with Emergency Teleport into Ziyaman, which he negates it with, I think, an Ash Blossom. Sorry, the angle isn't perfect here. Uh, we use our Field Spell, which probably should have been activated first. Whoops! Misplay. Let's get Ogre Dancer out of the hand and search for a Deer Note, activating its effect to a special uh, Ziyaman here. And it's a pretty good spot for the Mirror Jade as it hits us with the effect. We normal summon Sharakusai and activates effect to Fuse. And much to my surprise, he actually does not negate this with Dragoon. So we summon Rising Carp and then draw a card with a Field Spell and it gets us a Lobelian. We use Lobelian to search Druid's Worm to try help crack this. Although remember, Dragoon can't be targeted, so this doesn't feel too comfortable yet. We activate the Rising Carp, which is an e telly for two, and he does not negate with Dragoon. Maybe... Maybe he's holding it for next turn. No, actually, he just has super polarization. Yeah, so he just gets rid of two of our monsters. That makes a mud dragon. Or at least I thought it was. It turns out he doesn't have a target in his extra deck. This is awkward. Uh, well, locals is locals. 
Well, we continue with our turn and Synchro. We arrange the chains in such a way that Dragoon is now uh, kind of useless. Uh, we get a Ghost Ogre to the hand, a Rising Cart back on the board, and a draw from the field. We overlay into the Gengirsu, and that is a very easy bait. The Super Poly finally has a target, which is Starving Venom Fusion Dragon here. On resolution, the Dingirsu sends Dragoon, and now we summon Druze Worm, banishing his Lebellion. We tribute our own Druze Worm, summoning our own Lebellion, and triggering the Druze Worm to send the Starving Venom, which only triggers when destroyed and not when sent from the Druze Worm. We get a Branded Beast from the deck and set the Nashawari Surprise and pass turn. Branded Fusion comes down on his turn, no Ash Blossom for us, and he makes Lebellion the Searing Dragon, which gives a Draco Stapelia. He tries to fuse with that Predaplant scale, but that Ghost Ogre Search actually coming in clutch here as it stops the scale from resolving. Literally a negate, do not at me. Now things get a little bit weird here because he summons Cartesia instead of just going into the battle phase. He tries to fuse and then I chain the Branded Beast to destroy that and then that forces him to fuse without Cartesia, outing the Mirror Jade and Dragostopelia for me, giving him a Mud Dragon. And it's not going super well for him, honestly. Not exactly the optimal plays here, but it's the X1 bracket at locals. We don't have much of a play here except for the field spell, summoning Foxy Tune to attack with a Mud Dragon and passing there. He summons Cartesia again, Goes to the battle, and now I use my Nashawari Surprise to destroy her. And of course, you'd think he would like to chain here, but actually, Cartesia is main phase only, so I get a free pop on the Lebellion. His last card does nothing, passing to us, which lets us use the Foxy Tune, sending itself from the hand, or field, by the way, by discarding to special Zayaman, giving us another Foxy Tune special out by the field spell, into the Heavenly Dragon, Dragon Revive, revive for a Madam Spider, search for another draw. We got some big damage here, nearing lethal, we pass turn. He draws, he gets Albaz, he discards for cost to make Mirror Jade. It's kind of bad here, but we have an effect, Valor. That was such a slog, honestly, and I think I should have lost that if he played a little bit more optimally. But I think I might have made a couple of mistakes myself as well, like not optimizing my draws on that field spell. Game number two, Branded opts to go first, and wow, look at that. Instant Fusion again, the limited card in the opening hand. This is truly Kit Kalos's world, and we are just living in it. After a flurry he plays, he gets to an Albion, which I have the Druze Worm for, to banish the Albaz, forcing an awkward fusion into Drago's Topelia. He deploys the troops for Cartesia, 07. Lebellion comes out for Albion, and he tries to fuse with Cartesia, but we have our one-off Ghost Ogre to pop the Cartesia, forcing yet another awkward fusion summon. Apparently, he just had no targets left to fuse at this point, and maybe he didn't see the line or something, but I took his word for it, and then we just continue. Branded opening gets an Alibur from the deck, which searches Branded in red, proceeding to the end phase with a set banishment. And through two hand traps, this is really not that bad. Uh, let's see if we can try crack this one. Here's your boy we haven't seen all day. It's uh, Fenrir, which is unfortunate because Drew's Worm is on the field. In order to maximize some value, we go into the battle phase, crash with Lebellion. He really should have put that in defense mode, meaning we can now force out to send a special summon monster targeting the Dragus Topelia, which he uses branded banishment first, though, to fuse with it, making a starving Venom Fusion Dragon. Wait! That's illegal! Uh, yeah, it's the damage step. You can't use banishment here, and we missed it. Oh well! Next, uh, my Fenrir is live now, so I search another copy of itself, giving me discard fodder for my normal summon, Zayaman. We go into the Foxy Tune plane, we just start killing, honestly. Baron the floor is made first to insulate us from further disruption. We can get to Sharakusai from the deck, fusing with our hand, and that continues the punk line. From here, the combo's pretty standard, as you've seen already, plus with the Baron. We get our Madam Spider search of the trap that pops, as well as the field spell, drawing us an extender that gives us an end board of Unicorn after spinning Starving Venom, a set pop, the quick synchro play for the Heavenly Dragon, a ball drake in the hand, and a Baron the floor. He draws for a turn, takes a look at his grave, realizes there's nothing valuable there, and then scoops it up. 2-0, baby! Let's get into that final round and see if we can end on an X1 record today. Yet again, beginning with a hand of Dancer, Telly, Ash, Lobelian, and Wagon. Decent stuff here through most hand traps. Let's see how this plays out here. We're going to Zayaman off this E-Telly, which is hit with an Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, which is perfect for us because we have that Ogre Dancer in the hand to search for any other name, in this case being the Sharakusai Normal Summon. This gets hit with a Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. Interesting. So we still have to fuse, and because of that, we have Wagon in the hand, so we get to keep the materials. Rising Carp does its thing. No Field Spell, unfortunately, or a way to recur it, so we won't be getting any free draws, but through two hand traps, we still have a decent enough end board. We proceed to the end phase and through two hand traps, we have a quick synchro for the heavenly, a search Druze Worm, a search pop, and then Ash Blossom we had in the opening hand, so I'm feeling pretty confident here. I think maybe this could have been played out slightly better, because normal summon Wagon to get the field could have been nice for the instant field spell access, and it does mean that anything on Xiamen does stop us. I don't know, I think overall it did work out fine, but maybe the Wagon at the beginning with the field spell search was probably optimal. He draws for a turn and slams down a Book of Eclipse, and I think if it's worth letting it go for a moment, but the quick synchro and face up pop while he control a punk for Nashawari is too important. I ask the Eclipse, and then now he proceeds with a Talents. He needs some cards it looks like, because he decides to draw, and then top decks another Book of Eclipse. 
I consider Psychic and Punisher for a moment, but I feel like maybe getting that end phase draw value could be worth it if you can't crack my field. It's hard to tell, and it was probably worth synchroing after paying so many life points. Pep is just really hard to out, and plus we'd get one draw off of the set Magnemon anyway. We'll just see how this one goes, because it doesn't go anywhere, since he just scoops it up. His hand, a Mutant, and some other junk, which uh, won't play through this. So we're good to go to round number two, versus Mutant Sprite, I think is what this is shaping up to be. For this one, we open a hand of double evenly matched, Ash Blossom, Druze Worm, and uh, the wrong punk monster. It's a wagon. So no real engine, but the potential of any punk top deck to really make this into an insane hand. He uses e Talion. Well, I did see a Mutant Monster game one, which, by the way, goes to show you, uh, don't show your hand to your opponent when you scoop, because here's the thing. I know how mutants work. The normal summons are all massive Ash bait since they go minus one. So it's probably correct to not Ash here, uh, but he did make uh, my decision significantly easier, because now I know it's mutants. Well, anyway, Mutant Mutant is special summoned, and then Nimble Beaver is normal summoned, yes. Ha! Huh? <laughs> my man is indeed playing Sprite Mutant. Loki kind of based, actually. He goes for the Sprite Sprint, and that's a perfect Ash Blossom on the Angler effect. Or is it? I don't I don't know. I think I'd rather stop his Sprite Engine, because if I hit him here with the Ash, he just makes Gigantic and gets the Sprite Blue, which does everything. So I actually end up choosing to hold here, and I let him swarm, and then I Ash the Gigantic to pray that he hasn't gone into a Sprite. And actually, there it is, because he now overlays into the Melfi Rabbit. Forest Gump or Rabbi, I don't know, I'm not a furry. The X searcher right he sets a card goes to the end phase and e tellies for ghost ogre not realizing that teleport vanishes in the end phase you probably shouldn't do this but i let him take it back because i really want to test my deck's ability and it's just locals because i really want to see if i can crack this board so we draw for turn and now we're staring down the ogre the xe guy which is a fiendish chain and the bounce of a sprint with gigantic we start the turn with a battle phase and the match is even but yeah, there's not much else for us here because, well, we didn't draw a good engine card, so pass turn. He draws for turn and overlays into a second Gigantic with a normal summon Mutant, and I hit him with the top deck Ash Blossom and still no engine. He goes battle phase, punches, makes downward Zeus with a back row. We draw for turn and pick up a Fenrir, still no engine, but kind of strong here regardless. We summon the Fenrir, and he doesn't immediately use Zeus, which tells me that back row could be something spicy. I use the effect to add itself, and we go to the battle phase, and in the start step, that's when he decides to use the field. Apologies for the angle, I can't quite tell what the set was here, uh, but it's all forced out now with one more Zeus effect remaining. I summon a second copy now, and then normal summon Wagon. He activates Zeus here, because he will just get barren. And now there's a world, I should have summoned the Druze here in chain, because Druze Worm will land on the field, get Zeus, and then clear the board, but I would have zero cards left. Plus, Beasteals don't really have a ton of, like, utility in this matchup anyway, so I just a thought, but let's continue and see how it plays out. He draws for turn, and just attacks and passes. We top deck Magnum up, uh, so there's two Beasteals in our hand, and that's full Dragon Link combo in theory. We summon out both, making Dark, Druze send the Gigantic, and we bring back, well, nothing. Uh, we needed all those Chaos Monsters for our Beasteals. Uh, so I think I could have got like a free downward maybe, but I don't think I have a light or dark in my grave for my own Beastial Summon. So it's just dark pass clearing the field with a searched flub a double lion in the end phase. He draws for turn, thinks for a moment, and then pass. We draw for turn, pick up an evenly matched, and get ashed on our Labellion, so we just poke again. He draws and T-sets, and this is definitely one of those modern Edison games where your deck just does absolutely piss. We draw again, and it's fucking Deer Note. I consider Tribute Summoning to see if Dark can search anything, but I don't think that's how that works or if I even had any good targets. We attack the set and he damage step Gamma Bursts to keep his level 2 on the field for the following turn. He draws, doesn't see a level 2 body thankfully, puts his jet into attack and then uses the grave effect of Gamma Burst to punch my Dark who can't actually search anything. I draw for a turn and now I pick up Foxy Chun. Now normally that's full combo, but with such a depleted hand it's basically Deer Note special into punch and pass. He draws and sets. This is the worst game of Yu-Gi-Oh I've ever played, our hands are just doing nothing. We draw for turn and it's Madam Spider. We try to search, but he has another Ash Blossom, and don't you just love top decking hand draws for turn? We sync up it to Heavenly Dragon, bounce his set monster, and finally, we attack for game, ending the tournament on a 3-1 and one record. Wow, what a day, what a game, what a ridiculous match. I hope you enjoyed the duels. Let me know if you had any feedback on some of the plays and what your thoughts are in general. Let's go take a look at the spoils of war and uh, see what we've pulled from today's event. When I say today, I mean this was literally in like the middle of October of 2023. All right, it's the spoils of war. The end of our locals has unfortunately yielded us only an X1 record, but we got a decent amount of packs here as our first uh, little promo thing is a super rejuvenation. Can't wait to play this in my uh, dragon ruler time wizard deck. All right, we got a first pack here of Dueling Nexus. Our holo is an Infernoble uh, Turpin. I think this is, this is the Grave one, I think, right? 
Yeah, he's a pretty good card, but not what we're looking for today. Second pack of Dolus Nexus. We're looking for... Do, 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 do. Oh! <laughs> we got a Secret Rare Crimson Drag. That's pretty good. We take that. Uh, well, I'm throwing that one up on eBay. Although, maybe I should keep it. I don't know. We'll see. There is a world where I want to play some Synchron uh, eventually for this series, so... Uh, Crimson Dragon, very good pull. And, uh, oh boy, can we get a secret as well as an ultimate rare from the OTS here? Let's have a look. We got Branded in Red, Sync Blast Wave, and a Super Branded Lost here. Alright, well, highlight of course is the uh, secret rare Crimson Dragon. So uh, maybe we'll be hot red calamitying people soon, we'll see.